arrays and pointers. I am Pankaj Shukla and you can catch me at suklap at gmail.com. So first we need to understand what is the need of an array. As we know when you make a program whatever data you stored that should be stored in a variable now a particular variable's memory requirement depends on which type it belongs to that means different type of variable has different types of memory requirements some need 2 bytes some need 4 bytes some need 6 bytes etc the different types in C are integers, float, characters, double, long, salt, etc. Of course, these are built-in types. Suppose we want to store 100 integer values in a program. Now, giving them different variable names and later remembering them is a difficult process. So, what is the solution? It would be easier for us if we could give a single name as a parent name to refer to all the integer values. Now if we want to access a particular value, it is referred using an index which indicates whether the value is the first one or second one or tenth one in that parent's name. So what is an array basically? An array can be defined as the collection of the sequential memory locations. It can be referred by a single name along with a number known as the index to access a particular field or data. Whenever we declare an array, we will have to assign the type as well as the size. For example, here we have taken integer a10. So here integer is the data type, a is the name of the array and 10 is the size of the array. So this array will contain 10 integer data. Now when we say a0 that means we are referring to the first integer value in a. a. If we say a1 that means we are referring to the second integer value. Similarly, if you are referring to the ith value in a array, we should write a i minus 1. When we declare the array of 10 elements, the index value changes from 0 to 9. Here we should remember that the size of the array is always a constant and not a variable. This is because the fixed amount of memory will be allocated to the array before execution of the program. This method of allocating the memory is known as static allocation. Here you can see that we have defined size as 10 and then we have declared array integer a inside the bracket size. Similarly b inside the bracket size. The advantage of this kind of declaration is that if we want this program to run for an array of 200 elements, we need to change just the define statement. Now how can we initialize the array? So we will see through this example. Here we have declared an array A of the size 10. Size has been defined 10. Now we need to use the for loop. For i is equal to 0, i is less than size semicolon i plus plus. So we are incrementing the value of i from 0 to size. And we are initializing the value of array, each element of the value of array at 0. An array can also be initialized directly as follows. Like this, integer b3 
is equal to 7, 9, 11. So the first value will be 7, second will be 9 and the third value will be 11 of the array B. Similarly, we can have int A. Inside bracket we need not provide the size and we will do it 0, 1, 2. So automatically here the size will be 3. Similarly, we can have INTA 5 is equal to 0, 1, 2. Here only 3 values has been initialized. However, the size of the array is 5. That means the last 2 value will be initialized automatically as 0. Next very important topic is pointers. As we know, the computer memory is a collection of storage cells. These locations are numbered sequentially and are called addresses. Pointers are addresses of memory location. Any variable which contains an address is a pointer variable. Pointer variables store the address of an object, allowing for the indirect manipulation of that object. Pointers are declared using the star operator. For example, integer star p. Here p is a pointer variable of integer type. So the pointer p stores the address of an integer. In other words, it points to an integer. Once the pointer variable is declared, it can be made to point a variable with the help of an address operator that is ampersand sign. So for example here you can see that num is an integer variable for which we have given the value of 1024. Then we have taken a pointer variable p which is pointing to an integer. In the next line we have assigned the value of p is ampersand of num. That means p points to the variable num. The pointer can hold the value of 0 indicating that it points to no object at present. That is called null pointer. But the pointer can never store a non-address value. That means p will only store the address. So p is equal to num cannot be done. It is invalid because num is not an address, it is an integer. A pointer of one type cannot be assigned the address value of the object of another type. For example, here if you see, we have declared two variables. One is the pval and another is the star p, where p is the pointer variable and pval is just a normal variable. So we have given p is equal to m percent of p val that is allowed but p of m percent of d val that is not so what is the relation between pointers and arrays pointers and arrays are related to each other all programs written with arrays can also be written with the pointer Consider the following. Here we have declared and initialized an array A as 579. Now to access the value of this array, either we can write A0 or a star A. Both is fine or same. Similarly, we can write A1 or a star inside the bracket A plus 1. Since a star is used as pointer operator and is also used to dereference the pointer variables, you have to know the difference between them thoroughly. See, a star inside bracket a plus 1, it means the address of a is increased by 1. And then the contents are fetched. So from above example, the address of a is increased by 1. And then if we fetch the content, we will get the second value that means a1 that is 7. However, if somebody writes a star a plus 1, that means the contents are fetched from address a and 1 is added to the content. 
So the value will be 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. Thank you.